of, okay, just dn of tau in this case, if we do it with respect to tau. Hey boys, I'm the end from the near one minute later future. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. You know recently we have talked a lot about the Dirichlet kernel and how awesome it is, how, how useful it is, how it's going to um, enrich your life to a huge extent. Yeah, no, not really, but it's fun to play around with. And with the Dirichlet kernel you have found out about, well, one of many summability kernels. A little approximation to the Fourier series. But why not talk about little Cesaro summation on Fourier series? We are going to talk about the Fayer kernel today. I hope I've pronounced his name correctly. He's a Hungarian mathematician. He's the first Hungarian boy on this channel. So why not create a little Fayeroid? Oh, a, a Fayeroid. <laughs> that sounds so exciting. Yeah, why not create this? And today we are just going to derive this very kernel from the Dirichlet kernel right here. Our best friend, our newest best friend. Who cares about the geometric series? The Dirichlet kernel is where the cool boys are at. Everybody's hardcore until the Dirichlet kernel starts walking. <laughs> oh my boy. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. To derive the Fayer kernel, we are going to do it recursively in this process. We are going to manipulate this right here a little bit using a pretty ugly <laughs> bunch of addition theorems. It's really an absolute mindfuck. It's, it's not too cool to derive, but we're just going to do it like that. So at first I would like to take a look at a pretty different task. Namely that the sine squared of n plus 1 times tau over 2 minus sine squared of n times tau over 2 is something we are going to derive in a minute. Okay, what the hell is this right here? So at first you might notice that this right here is nothing but the difference of two squares. So we can take the positive times the negative part of this thing. So at first we have the sine of n plus 1 times tau over 2. Okay, positive or negative, I really don't care. Negative sine of n times tau over 2. Okay, that's the negative part times the positive branch right here, branch, whatsoever. So just with a positive sign in here. So sine of n plus 1 times tau over 2, positive sine of n times tau over 2. Okay, first part done. That's already quite good. And you see, I haven't done this addition formula for nothing a few days ago whatsoever. I don't really have an upload schedule. So let's consider this to be our A and this to be our B. Then we have derived that this difference of sine waves is nothing but two times the sine of A minus B over two. So this is going to give us, what is it going to give us exactly? So we have A minus B. So this is N times tau over two plus tau over two. N times tau over two minus N times tau over two is zero. So we are going to end up with tau over two over two. This is going to give us tau over four. Okay. Times the cosine of a plus b. Okay. I'm just going to write everything out over two. This a plus b over two. So we have n times tau over two plus tau over two and then plus n times tau over two. Okay. Just everything step by step times two times nearly the same spiel. So you see, we can make use of the same addition formula, but you see, we don't have a negative sign here. But, but what exactly is a positive sign? This is negative one times negative one. So why not leave a negative sign here? And since the sign is an odd function, meaning sine of negative x, just negative sine of x, why not bring the other negative sign to the inside? Just a little algebraic manipulation. Then we have sine of a minus b over two. Okay, what is going to give us? This is the sine of, okay, then we have n times tau over 2, this whole thing over 2 in the end, positive tau over 2, and then negative and negative is going to become positive, so positive n times tau over 2. 
Then we have the cosine of a plus b over 2. Okay, cosine. Then we have n times tau over 2 plus tau over 2 minus n times tau over 2. Over 2 is going to give us tau over 4 in the end once again. Just simplifying everything. Take a piece of paper, try it out for yourself, my boys. Okay, here comes the really cool part. So we can distribute this one half into all the tau over twos right here to get tau over four and then we can actually factor stuff. And since our multiplication is a billion on the real numbers, why not bring this into a new order right here? So let's rewrite it a little bit differently. So this is two times the sine of tau over four times the cosine of tau over four and maybe you can already see where this is going in the end times two times and then we have the sine of okay like I said factoring stuff so we have um, 2n right here 2 times n plus 1 times tau over 4 times the cosine of the very same argument right here 2 times n plus 1 times tau over 4 <sighs> and the really cool thing is this right here is just a double angle formula for the sine same spiel here so what you have to do, you just have to take the sine of 2 times this argument right here and 2 times this argument. So we are going to end up with the sine of tau over 2 times the sine of, well, this argument times 2. So this is just this stuff times tau over 2. 2 times n plus 1 times tau over 2. <gasps> Why exactly is this good what we have done here? Well, under the condition that sine of tau over 2 isn't equal to 0, Tau is 2 times pi, <laughs> not good. That's a random little running gag down there in the comments. I really appreciate this running gag. It's kind of funny, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, um, we can just divide both sides by this thing right here to get an expression for sine of 2 times n plus 1 times tau over 2. Do we have this factor? Well, we indeed do. If we just factor out this one half on this upper term right here. So this is nothing but sine of, well, 2 times n plus 1 times tau over 2 over sine of tau over 2. And here's where the magic is going to happen. So our part up here is nothing but, well, this chunk over sine of tau over 2. So we are going to end up with 1 over 2 times pi. Then we are going to have, well, this chunk, so sine squared of n plus 1 times tau over 2 minus sine squared of n times tau over 2 over sine squared now of tau over 2. Let us make use of the linear linearity ugh, of the numerator, I'm terribly sorry, to just break this up into two parts right here. 1 over 2 times pi. Then we have the sine squared of n plus 1 times tau over 2 over the sine squared tau over 2. And then we have negative 1 over 2 times pi. And then this chunk, sine squared of n times tau over 2 over sine squared tau over 2. And here is where the Fayet kernel comes in, finally. If we take a look at this little argument right here, this little shift in the sine wave, this is n plus 1. And we are going to define it as follows. This thing right here is nothing but n plus 1 times the Fayet kernel of the n plus 1 degree with respect to tau. Okay, and this thing right here is nothing but n times the Fayet kernel, we have an n up here, of the nth degree of tau. And now we are going to derive a final expression for our Fayet kernel right here, recursively making use of our Dirichlet kernel which we started off with. For sure I had to forget something as always like this with big derivations. Um, yeah. Even for me, the papa, sometimes things are hard. No, many things are hard for me. <laughs> Most of the time you guys get the expression that I'm just doing all of this stuff easily, but I'm not. It's, I'm deriving stuff like this at home and it's not easy. It's kind of hard. So. Um, I forgot to include the 1 over 2 times pi in the definition of the Fayet kernel right here. So I'm terribly sorry for this, but this right here is the full definition. That's why we have included the n and the n plus 1 right here in this um, recursive formula. 
And as always with recursion, we would like to plug in some initial values and see where this is going. Let's see if we can find a certain pattern in there. So why not start off with d0 right here, when n is equal to 0. So the Dirichlet kernel of the zero of degree, well, it doesn't quite matter what it is at the moment, but we can plug the stuff into here. So this is going to give us where well, zero plus one is just one, field share kernel of one in this case, minus zero times field share kernel of zero. We really don't care. So this thing is just going to vanish. So d zero is nothing but the first degree um, fire kernel, not field share kernel, I'm terribly sorry. This is more of a French way to say it probably, the fire kernel, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> No offense to the Hungarian boys in the comments down there. Let's move on. Let's see what happens at the Dirichlet kernel of degree one. Well, naturally, this is giving us two times the Fayer kernel of two, degree two, minus one times the Fayer kernel of degree one. But the cool thing is, we know what the Fayer kernel of degree one is. It's nothing but the Dirichlet kernel of degree zero. So this is nothing but two times Fayer two. I'm going to refer to this as Fayer two or something, minus d zero. Why not add d not d zero on both sides and divide both sides by two? It's not equal to zero if you can trust the Peano axioms. So that's equivalent to saying Fayer degree two is nothing but one half d one plus d not. Let us move on one more iteration and maybe you can already see a pattern right here. So we are going to get Fayer um, d2. At the moment, Dirichlet of degree 2. It's nothing but, okay, this is 3 times Fayer of degree 3 minus 2 times Fayer of 2. Okay, but we know what Fayer of 2 is. It's nothing but this right here. 2 and 1 half is going to cancel out to just well, one. So this is three times phi air of degree three minus d1 minus d naught. Why not add those on both sides and divide both sides by three? It's not equal to zero. We are going to end up with, okay, phi air of three being equal to one third times d naught plus d1 plus d2, okay? I hope you can see the pattern. So if we move on up until the nth term, the Fayer of degree n, the Fayer kernel of degree n, is going to be one over n times the sum running from, well, zero. So let's say um, k being equal to zero to capital N of, okay, just dn of tau in this case, if we do it with respect to tau. Hey boys, I'm the Jens from the near one minute later future. It's obviously supposed to be a n minus one. So you see, fire three, d two, n minus one. And this should actually be it. And you see, if we turn this into its summation formula, so you see with this e to the i times k times tau, with this finite sum, you're going to get a little Cesaro summation right here. And there are many different ways to formulate this Fayet kernel right here. We are going to talk about a few more things in the near future. That was quite a long derivation. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. Don't forget to check out the new website. I posted a lot of stuff on there already. Don't forget to check out the subreddit. My new merch on Teespring, beanies, backpacks, um, cool little caps right here, stuff like this. And yeah, <laughs> until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day and keep being flammable, my boys. Woo, ciao. Die ganze Zeit kämpfen. Leider fehlt mir gerade meine Final Fantasy Battle Musik. Komm. Wir nähern uns dem besten Haus, wo gibt.